there were documents all over the place. He mostly used his bedroom as kind of his own repository. He had things, as you can see, um, uh, up, in, up in his bedroom in file cabinets, and everything was meticulously labeled by president, by inaugural party, by date, so forth. But that was just one part of it. The whole apartment was full of stuff. There were documents, unbelievable things, signed by Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, as Jim said, um, Abraham Lincoln, just all over the place. I mean, literally, it was like a Toys R Us for historians. And we all looked at each other. Um, we had brought about three archival boxes, a few pieces of mylar, and clearly that wasn't going to be enough. Thank God for um, Staples being across the street from his apartment. We immediately went over there, used our good old government charge card, and literally bought out the place with boxes. And luckily, a rider truck facility was within driving distance. We had one car. We ended up getting the rider truck. So this is to give you a timeline. We got to the apartment around 5, 30, 6 o'clock, surveyed it with the FBI, uh, some staff from the NARA facility in Manhattan were, were also there. I don't think we got out of there until about 2.30 in the morning. We made a conscious decision that we wanted to um, get everything done. The search warrant that uh, Jim had gotten for us specified a certain time. We were also concerned, even though Landau and Savadoff were in the Baltimore City Jail, that if we left some of these things, um, Landau had an attorney who had access to his apartment. Who knows what he was going to take and throw away. So that was the first search warrant. Um, and we brought back about 7,000 items and just going around the apartment. And we had a specific, also a time frame of what documents that we could bring back. And just moving ahead again, um, one of the more significant documents that we would later find is what um, Jim mentioned and also Archivist Ferio is FDR's 1937 inaugural address. And What's really interesting about this is the photograph. You can see that there's a, uh, someone's holding an umbrella. FDR gave this speech in the rain. It was a cold, blustery, rainy day like yesterday. He refused to um, have an umbrella over him. So when you look at the document itself, it's kind of crinkly. It, it was um, watermarked. But more significantly, um, oops, um, at the top, is that purple ribbon. And that ribbon was kind of a specialty of Grace Tully, who was FDR's secretary. Anytime she got a document to file, she'd punch a hole in the top and place a purple ribbon around it. That signified that it was FDR's office copy. So when we recovered this, we knew darn well that it was belonged to the National Archives. That was the telltale side, and along with the other uh, documents that um, we recovered that belonged to NARA. And going through all of these documents after the second search warrant, which we executed within a couple of weeks later, we ended up, as already said, about 10,000 items. 